In our series of deploying Windows 11, we've gone over several different topics, including imaging. We haven't gone over Pixie Boot as a technology to allow you to image in mass across a network. That's what we're doing today. And we're going to focus on Pixie Booting through Windows Deployment Server. Coming up next. Welcome to Tech Topics brought to you by CyberVenger. We help keep small businesses stay protected and compliant with cutting edge cybersecurity and IT solutions. Okay, so Windows Deployment Server is one of diff several different technologies out there that can allow you to leverage the Pixie Boot protocol. Pixie is, um, DXE is very much like DHCP. It's a protocol that allows you to do certain things. And not so ironically, it depends on DHCP as well. We're going to focus on Microsoft's implementation, WTS Windows Deployment Server, not to be confused with MDT, Microsoft Deployment. Cool. The two are closely related. They work together. MDT, however, has been retired in Windows 11. It worked great with Windows 10. We've had a lot of exposure with it. Kind of sorry to see that go. Uh, but, you know, Microsoft is going to push you towards their um, more paid options. But Windows Deployment Server is still free, which is great. And really, it's all you need. What Windows Deployment Server does is it listens on a network for Pixie broadcasts. You put a broadcast on the network, it picks it up, and replies with it. Same time a Pixie comes up on the network, it sends out a DTP request as well. So you have your DTP server over here, and you have your WS server also on the same network. Now, the important thing to remember, that's the same network. If your WDS server is in a different network, what you're going to need to do is the same thing as if you had a DHCP server in a different network, different VLAN. You need to set up a DHCP relay on the switch so you can go across VLANs. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that in this video. We're just going to walk you through how to set up a WDS server and how to get the initial image loaded. And what we're going to do is we're going to load uh, Hyrin's boot disk as our one of our options to boot from so that if you're on a Windows, if you're on a machine that you want to load Windows 11 on, you can boot off of Iron's boot desk from the network, disk, not desk, I want to say desk, <laughs> disk, and then you can load that on there and boot from the network and then you can image it using DISIM. That's the pro process. So, so the process is that you're going to boot your network boot workstation off of a network pixie aware network card and it's going to broadcast out it's going to get dtp from the dtp server it's then going to get the pixie boot information from the pixie boot server in this case wds and then it's going to boot up an image and you're going to get a menu and that menu is going to allow you to pick several different installations whatever you can figure we're walking through that configuration and we're going to have Hyrens boot disk because one of them, if you boot off a Hyrens boot disk, you're going to have that Pixie boot or key, PE environment uh, to work with. And then you can use DISM to use WIM files. And we've gone over using DISM and WIM file creation in other videos. We're not going to talk too much about that here. We'll just show the command kick off real quick. Uh, we'll walk you through it. That's the methodology that we're going to be using. So first thing we need to do is we need a Windows... 2016 or later server. My lab PC is uh, set up here with Windows 16, 2016 on it. And we're going to install WD server. So take a look down here. All right. So here we have our roles. So we're going to, I got server manager already open. We're going to add a role. Pretty straightforward so far. There's our lab server. And here down here, Windows deployment server. That's what we're, that's what we're rolling. And next, next, or next, install. See, it's pretty straightforward. You just select it and just keep whacking the, you know, the next keys until you're done. And then this runs. I'm going to let this install and pause the video here so you all don't have to wait and watch the thing creep forward. Okay, so that's finished. Close that. And I'm ready to open the tool. We want used. Option one, really? No deployment services. There it is. That installed. Watch that puppy. So first thing we need to do 
is we're going to need to install the initial boot image. So we're going to configure it. Right click, configure server. I'm going to go through this whole wizard. And what it's going to want, yeah, we're going to do a standalone. We don't care about Active Directory integrated here. You could, but that's not what we're going for. We're trying to keep it simple and straightforward. This is the easiest install to get you started. And we're going to put our deployment on our... There we go. Pixie. I want to respond to all client computers. Make this easy. We could lock it down so that only certain computers can connect, but uh, we're going to go with the simple version. This is just the basic get it going. All right. Now, the first thing we need to do is add an image, but we're not adding the image we want to run. This is going to be doing Windows 11. We want a simple Windows 11 Oc Factor image. In fact, it'll try and it'll yell at us if we try and install something else. Like if I try to go to my uh, downloads here, all right. So we can't go to the path as image file. What we have to do is we have to mount our ISO first. So I've got an ISO here. There's our miscellaneous stuff. And I'm going to right click on this ISO and I'm going to mount it. And that's going to give me access to all the files in the stock install here of Windows 11. And that's just a regular stock Windows 11 CD. So here we go. On to our new G drive. And the folder is going to be sources. Sources what boot and install dot win files are located. Next, it hung there for a while for some reason. So we create a brand new image group. We don't really care. Uh, off we are to the races. Okay. In real time, that took like 10 minutes. Um, that was a slow process. All right. So now we have the basic boot image here. Uh, we have our initial pixie image. Now we got to go to boot, boot images, and this is where we actually install our choices in our menu. And uh, here is kind of our problem, though. We have to mount that ISO again, just like last time. So we are going to call it Explorer. We're going to drop off that ISO. We'll go find our high range boot disk. We'll mount it. No, I could also put uh, 2019 here if I wanted to. Or Ubuntu, I think. Well, no, I think I need to change the... Uh, if you want to put Linux on, you got to change your initial boot image, your, in, your install image. All right, so there we go. We're back to G. I'm going to go here. To G. And look, under right under sources, it found boot whim. That's our boot file for Hirons. Yeah, it recognizes the name. We could change if we wanted to. And away we go. We're adding the image. Again, I'll pause and come back when that's done. That's finished. All right, so now we have our boot options. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when we try to boot a machine that's set for a network boot and see what we got. So we got our test machine here. Let it the options in the boot order to make sure that our network drive comes first. Also made sure that I exported the key ahead of time because that's very important. Launch this puppy now. The BitLocker key, I mean. So we can unlock the BitLocker drive. We're going to capture this image. I can make another video where I show how to do that, but uh, again, 
focusing on WDS for this video. Hit enter. And then here's our menu. We can choose our, our high range boot disk or stock Windows 11 setup. Pause a little, skip some of the lag of booting. So it's booted. Our first thing we need to do, because this is Oxmox Bay, is give this thing some drivers. Device manager. Yep. Uh, Iron Tweet does allow you to add drivers. And I already added that earlier. Here's our vert IO win. I just let it scan everything. PCI device in here. Yep, same thing there. There's uh, more stuff in here, I think. That SCSI controller. Hmm, yeah, we need that. I think that's enough. Um, what we now want to do is unlock a bit locker drive. Well, actually, first, what we want to do. So that's going to be our installation disk. We're going to need our I drive. We're going to need BitLocker. Yeah, I don't care if you all see my BitLocker recovery key because that machine is going to be deleted in a few minutes. So get excited. Here is our disk management, BitLocker encrypted. First, we got to slap a drive letter on this thing. Of course, we want it to be C. And then we're going to want to go back to our old fashioned uh, file system here. There's our locked BitLocker drive, unlock the drive. Stop it or see, paste it. All right, so it's unlockered. And now we can use DISM. Capture image. Image file. I just that uh, whim. Actually, I think I need a backslasher, don't I? Yeah. And then uh, capture dir C. There we go. No. no. It's in there. Where do that? And there we go. It's capturing. Now, I'm not going to go through too much of this process. I just wanted to demonstrate that once we have uh, booted off a of Pixie, you know, we were able to boot up the Pixie boot, we were able to get to uh, Hyren, and we were able to map a drive, load our drivers, and run the DISM imaging tool, we could start pushing this to our iDrive up on the network, and we can use this file then. We can also deploy it from here, right? In reverse, we could deploy systems that way as well. Uh, if you are going to capture, you're going to make sure that you export your locker key ahead of time because it's Windows 11, right? So that's a consideration now. And that's uh, pretty much it. So if you're stuck around to this point in the video, it's a little longer video. I, I appreciate you doing that. and But you probably want to know a little bit more about DIS on how to do image capturing, image deployment, image maintenance, like putting Windows patching on there, adding drivers, certainly for the deployment time. We have videos for that. you got to check out our channel. We have some other... DISM, whatever you want to call it, tools. It's a great tool, actually. This is one of those times where I actually compliment Microsoft. I did something wonderful. I hope they keep it free. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, check those videos out. Those should help out. But this video, again, really wasn't about the DISM process. It's about WDS. So just a quick last-minute recap. If you want to do Pixie Boot, if you want to deploy through Windows Deployment Services, you need to be in the same VLAN or use DHCP Relay. And DHCP should really have both a DHCP server 
and the IP address of the WDS server to get both those pieces of information through the broadcast. And then you boot off your Pixie aware network card in your machine that you want to image, and you connect to the image file, and then you once you have that, once you boot up to high range boot disk or any other P environment that you want or you would like to use, then you can use DSM to deploy the image or capture if that's your source machine, whatever you want to do. If you're going to be captured, you're going to make sure you manage BitLocker, you unlock ahead of time, save the key, that sort of thing. And that's it in a nutshell. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for sticking around. This is a long one, I know. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has provided valuable information to you. Be sure to share this video with other small business owners to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want more information about cybersecurity visit us at www.cyberventure.com.